Welcome back to the Yes Chef Village podcast. I am your host, Chef Omaka, and you already know what it is. When we come here together, we come here to eat. And when I say eat, I mean that in so many different ways because we don't only eat when we shove things in our mouth. We eat with our eyes. We eat with our ears. We eat with our souls. We eat with our hands. We eat with our spirit beings. And so we have someone who is going to elaborate on how we should eat in more than just that, but how we should live. So I want to introduce you all to someone, and I'm going to go through her bio that I created. I, I was sent the bio by this beautiful queen, and I'm going to just go through some more of the important things that I believe she is doing. And all of it is important, but Adama Alaji. I found her on YouTube and she's a big sensational hit right now. And I believe that she's going to be in your podcast and on your platforms as well, because that's how powerful she is. Adama is a spirit earth mother and the voice of resurrection. Adama is the founder and CEO of Mother Earth's Blessings Holistic Life Center. Not only that, she is a lifestyle change consultant who specializes in counseling for couples, family, and individuals. Adama is a radio host based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and a YouTube powerhouse. She's the voice I would say we've all been needing. Adama's Life Center is the home of her Mother Earth's Blessings Health and Beauty Products, which we will dive into a little bit more. Her energy is contagious. Her light is luminous. She is a 45-year vegetarian, vegan. I'm going to let her break that down to you because that's something I wanted to go into. And she speaks deeply on issues that concern Black and Indigenous people. Adama, welcome to the Yes Chef podcast. Thank you, Chef. I really am delighted to be on this particular platform. I mm -hmm. always welcome every opportunity I have to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that you said that because how I want to open this dialogue up or this conversation up is simple. I, I, I'm not here to do an interview because that would require me asking questions and you answering in a response way. Really, I'm just here to have a conversation. And so I'm here learning. I'm here, you know, learning from someone who I see as a master. And I, I'm, I'm all about, you know, health and living life in a holistic way. So I definitely will just lay it out there and then let you kind of run off with it. Because as I've seen in some of your other um, interviews, it, it, it's probably best to just let you speak. And <laughs> I have an audience. I have a, a audience here in my own city where I live in Florida. I'm based out of St. Pete, which is next to Tampa. And uh, you know, I, have a, I have a nice community here that supports me. And one of the things I want to do is uh, introduce you to them. And that's how we're doing it through this platform. So Dhamma, I want to first just dive in and again, let you kind of run with it. Um, I, I want to first say thank you for, your, for you blessing us with your presence. And thank you for your soul, your light for coming this way. We welcome you here in our space. You're always welcome. Thank you so much. I am really always addressing the issues of our liberation, our salvation, our deliverance, reminding ones and ones that we have been under a global initiative of depopulation and genocide for quite some time, which is the escalation of someone's world conquering rampage that started 2000 years ago. All right. And the the issue for us is that we're not responding correctly mm -hmm. to being warred against. And it's a, it's a global initiative. It's not just a black and white issue. It's an intelligence issue. It affects mother earth, mother nature, all of her creatures, her oceans, her seas, her rivers, her streams. You understand that we are in a place and space where we have never ever been properly oriented as to what the purpose in being on the planet actually is. And because our feet are so firmly planted on the ground, we forget that we're in space. Mm. And we forget that the space is actually cosmic. It is beginningless, endless, infinite, and eternal. 
that the earth in relationship to the all there is is about as big as the period at the end of the sentence in relationship to the rest of the universe. And within the cosmic, there are an infinitude of universes, hmm. right? And so we are present in the beginninglessness and the endlessness and the infinity of eternity already. And then we have come in from another realm of eternity into this realm through the wounds of our mother sparked by the divine sacred fluid from our fathers. And then we got absolutely no support for respecting the sanctity, the divinity and the sacredness of being. Mm. Mm. So I'm reminding us of that. Mm. All right. So, so that we realize that as these points of an absolute and supreme intelligence, we're perfectly and divinely designed. And we have never been supported in respecting perfection at any level. Mm. We've been trained to respect proficiency. We become proficient at our instrumentations. We become proficient at our ball playing, our wrestling, our sports. Our, you, you understand? We become proficient. But proficiency and liberation are not necessarily the same thing. Mm -hmm. And to be in a place and space where we're dealing with a global populace of over 8 billion people who support the violation of billions of creatures on an annual basis. Okay, now. Fact, we're under a pandemic of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, abortion being the number one killer of us as a people, right? And so I'm reminding us that purpose in existence is in the full exaltation of a full life's urge, mm -hmm. right? As intelligences of existence, we, as all other intelligences should be exalting a full effort in our living. Mm -hmm. It should be impossible for us to feel entitled to do that which undermines ourselves. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. No other being lives to undermine itself mm -hmm. or its ones. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Everything exalts a full effort in its living. It knows its food. It excretes its waste. It knows its kind. It perpetuates itself. It mates. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And nobody leaves their babies over here or over here. You understand? Oh, yeah. Nobody has to go and consult another species to figure out how to have their own babies. Mm. You understand? I'm just saying. Ah, is mm. that we as human beings are on a different frequency than all of the other intelligences in existence. And that difference is because our behavior has been modified. Now, the other aspect of intelligences is that it loves its life. We've heard self-preservation is the first law. Mm -hmm. Everything loves its life to the degree to which it will exhibit some fright, flight, fierceness, ferociousness, when it senses that its life is being threatened mm. Mm -hmm. or become extremely uh, frustrated, anguished in, in entrapment, mm -hmm. whether it's real, the real, real, the rod fishing and the hook gets caught in the fish's lip, mm -hmm. then that fish ends the rest of its life traumatized in pain, in fear, in frustration, you understand whether it's the cow that's hearing the bellow of all, all of the other cows that are in the progression of slaughter. You understand? So I'm just saying is that we've got more disease in our communities as a result of us being sensitive spiritual people, but we're absorbing all of the pain, the frustration, and the anguish of the animals that we have been feeding from. Ooh, and I would even add just a, a, a piece to it when you said sensitive and when you think of sensitive you think of something being a little bit more soft and vulnerable and susceptible to absorbing things more and so being melanated beings being who we are sensitive spiritual beings when we eat things we're going to feel them on a deeper level we're going to experience those traumas on a deeper level that's part of the reason why i believe we as a people are experiencing some of the worst and the highest rates of, yes, like you said, abortion, because the trauma related to undermining ourselves because we're one with those things, undermining right. nature, undermining animal life and plant life, just like pure, like living out of this 
unconsciousness like of life, like you're living out of this unconsciousness of life. I like how you dove into that when you talked about this un, un this undermining yourself. I, when you say that, open that up some more. I want to hear that. Right. So as as beings, we should be exalting a full effort in our living. Mm -hmm. Now, as men, the progenitor of lineages, as womb men, the perpetuator of lineages, purpose in being is ensuring the progression of our lineages. Mm -hmm. Under a global initiative of depopulation and genocide, however, the intention is to phase our lineages out of existence. Mm -hmm. They're playing a long game where each generation has been assaulted with more chemical, more violation, more artificial colors, artificial flavors, nitrates, nitrites, BHA, BHT, all the synthetics, all of the shelf stabilizers and flavor enhancers and whatnot, all of the things that are in the sweet treats and the breakfast cereals and the cow's milk and all of the hormones, the ground up dairy cows at McDonald's and Burger King are dealing with that's assaulting the male bodies of, of boys with all of these female hormones from all of these animals. You understand? So most of the animals that are being bred for human consumption are female. Mm. Mm. And so most of them are bombarded with even more female hormones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are part of this genetic experimentation Mm -hmm. That has us in a place where we're no longer just male or female. We're some combination of the two. We've always been that. But now we're having to really come to a point in place where we are understanding the methodology of our oppression to oppress us at our cellular functioning. Mm -hmm. But also to put us in a place where we are divided within ourselves. Mm -hmm which yeah. is why people say, well, how is it that we can't come together? How is it that black people can't come together? We see that the Jews do what they do and the Asians do what they do and these ones do what they do, but we are unable because we are not feeding the way that is naturally ours to feed. Mm. Mm. All right, so, so the ramifications of being assaulted with nitrates, nitrites, BHA, BHT, all of the synthetics, there were iron filings in our cornflakes, all of the sugar and the synthetics, it was degerminated, uh, devitalized, and then fortified with the riboflavin and the thiamine and all of the, you understand, synthetics. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just saying is that what is the effect? The effect of those chemicals is that it has modified our behavior to the degree to which we are unresponsive to being warred against. <sighs> mm. Now, as, as most people, right? Now, there aren't any ones upon the planet who have not suffered at the hands of other ones. The warfare of man against man, brother against brother has been going on for thousands of years. All right. So I'm just saying that everybody has been impacted and affected by this. Mm -hmm. It's just that we as a people cannot wait for someone else to deliver us from from our from our own self-inflicted hurt. Mm -hmm. We have to do this ourselves mm -hmm. because it will never be legislated in a system of oppression to free you. You understand? So to be enslaved and for our enslavement to have been founded and justified by biblical scriptures and whatnot, so that when they gave us the Bible to teach us to read, would the fullness of the truth have been there? If it would have freed us, it says, know ye the truth and the truth will make you free. Right. What you understand, have we become free as a result of knowing the scriptures back and forth? Have we become free as a result of being in whatever demonic nation of Christianity, Islam, and all of the other ones that we have been under the oppression and, and suppression of because nobody ever taught us or have us in a place where we understand that there is only one absolute and supreme intelligence that sees through every eye. It's beating every heart, you understand? And to be in violation of any of it is to be in violation of God itself. You understand? To be in violation of the one self, the true self, the divine self, so that there is no way to truly survive it. We have to come to an understanding that there is absolute law that governs our lives, and we have never been supported in respect 
expecting mm -hmm. the law. Yeah. That, that is love, and love is the harmony of the truth that we are all these points of an absolute and supreme presence mm. and intelligence. Ooh, ooh. Oh, man, I, I can listen to you all day. That's that's what they call church. That was church. Wow. Wow. You know, I just like to say, um, you know, as a chef, I, 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 I dive all the way into nutrition because I understand that diabetes, obesity, and mental health. And I tell people this all the time, and you can even help 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 me here if, if you know from you know being someone who has um lived a longer life on this planet. Help me here understand it even deeper. Um, that when people say they're sick, they're sick because of this. They're sick because of that. It's genetic. It's hereditary. I always often say to people that all sickness is directly related to what you're eating food. Can you dive or open that up a little more as to our the sickness and disease and what's it related to, where it comes from, and, and you know how we think, how we eat, and all of that? How does all of that play into one? Well, well, the reality of our being perfectly and divinely designed, one, we're breathary. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to breathe. It is the breath that is the animating, maintaining, sustaining force of our lives. All right? We're perfectly and divinely designed. All right? Our bodies are 80% water, like the earth is 80% water. So ideally, 80% of our nutritional requirement would be coming from water-based things. That's our herbs, our fresh fruit that has the water, it has the fiber, it has the nutrients, and the leafy greens and things with seeds. Things that grow above ground that have seeds. All right, so we're talking our, our plantain, our squashes, our pumpkins, uh, you understand all of these things, the papayas, uh, all of these things, all these things have seeds, the dragon fruit, all of them. But the issue for us is realizing that being fed the carcasses of dead animals mm. is a violation of our perfect and divine design. We've heard the life is in the blood. Mm. Right. So if there was anything that would be vitalizing for our bodies coming from an animal, it would have to come from its blood, mm. not from its carcass. Mm. The life is in the blood. Oh, oh, that hit me. That hit different. All right. So so the it, but the but in order to get the life in the blood, the animal would still have to be alive. Right. Yeah. All right. Which is why East Africans and Tanzania and Kenya, the places they tap that juggler vein of the cow, get the get the blood, patch it up with some mud and whatnot. The cow is still standing. They've taken the, the, the blood. They can mix it with the milk. They milk that with their porridge or whatever. You understand? But they're not eating the carcass. The mm. carcass has to rot. Mm. To keep the carcass from rotting before it gets into our bodies, then it's shot up with the nitrates and nitrites, the preservatives. Mm -hmm. Because once the spirit leaves, right, then it's going to putrefy. Mm -hmm. Then they have that extra process of gassing it with carbon monoxide to make it still look arterial and fresh long after the nitrates and nitrites have worn off. Mm -hmm. All right. But the rot is going on in our body, the proliferation of the bacteria. Okay. So it's going to take three, four days, depending on what else you ate with the flesh. So the flesh, the protein and starch, is, which is how we were taught to eat the burger and the bun, right? The spaghetti and the meatballs, right? The steak and the potatoes, mm -hmm. starch and protein require different enzymes in the saliva where digestion starts to break it down. The protein requires an acidic enzyme. The starch requires an alkaline enzyme and they neutralize each other in the mouth so that by the time you chew it, chew it, swallow it, and then chase it with sweet tea or soda or, or milk or orange juice or whatnot, you've got a sludge that's happening. You're getting absolutely no frequency. Mm. No, nothing vitalizing, mm, particularly so. when you break your fast with turkey bacon, bacon, eggs, cheese, grits, potatoes, hash browns, eggs, McMuffins, all of this. We, it is a digestive nightmare that's mm. happening. All right. So this is the foundation of the sickness is in violation of our perfect and divine design. Mm. Mm. All right. Now, when you factor in 
the fact that we're breath airing. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to breathe. They're taking it through the nostrils, coming up through the lungs, and it oxygenates the cells. So the breath is actually cleansing. So we actually do not give our bodies permission to cleanse. The body's cleansing daily anyway. That's what it is designed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. But when you start your day with meat, dairy, eggs, chicken, fish, flesh, breakfast, cereals, cow's milk, and all of this stuff, there is no way you are facilitating the body's cleansing. Mm -hmm. Now you've got more sludge. Now you're really creating the constipation and the congestion. By the time we factor in flour and water, when I was a little girl, the teacher would say, tell your mom to send a cup, uh, two cups of flour to school. We're going to do art. Mm -hmm. Take the two cups of flour to school. We mix it with water. It makes paste. Mm -hmm. Two cups of flour starts your cookie dough, starts your cakes. Starts your pancakes, starts your, your your bread, your pastas, your pastries, your pretzels, your your bagels, your croissants, your donuts. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that when you have the donuts and coffee, you start your day with the muffins and this and that is just paste. Uh, paste is pastas. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now that paste is beginning to block all of your bronchioles, block and, and begin to create a bloodstream that becomes sludge. By the time you factor in the aborted fetuses of chickens and quail and ostriches and alligators and stuff, you know, these people eat all kinds of people's eggs, mm. all kinds of eggs, eggs, right? Everybody's progeny is subject to be eaten by somebody. Mm. All mm. right. And I'm saying, who would, you, would you eat your mama's eggs? Mm -hmm. When you eat your mama's eggs. Now, what is the egg? The egg is the hormones, the genetic information and chromosomes of another bee. Right, a hybridized being at that because we do not find chicken anywhere naturally in our lives. Hmm. Chicken is only found where it is cultivated. Waking some people it's up. Not, it's right, it's not like going into the woods and you see pheasant, you see uh, turkey buzzards, well. and you see quail, and you see you understand, you see possum, you see deer, you see rabbit, you see fox, you see armadillos. You see, there are a lot of other animals. Mm -hmm. that we would have in our environment so that if we were really carnivores and flesh eaters, then we would have the desire to hunt and kill. Mm -hmm. We that would is, salivate. Is, you understand? We would salivate at the roadkill that you just, you understand? Just saying that we are not flesh eaters. Mm. Eating flesh and the aborted fetuses of other ones, it's indigestible. Mm -hmm. We cannot digest it. We cannot, it does not provide us any of the uh, the minerals, the, the calcium, the iron, the phosphorus, the potassium, the manganese, and all of these things. We don't get any real nutrition. We are literally overtaxing our digestive systems, our livers, our kidneys, and all of this because all of that creates acidity. Mm. Now, by, by virtue of our perfect and divine design, our being naturally herbivorous, herbs, vegetation, and fruit, which are all alkalizing, all right? So in order to facilitate consistent cellular regeneration, repair, and whatnot, the system has to be alkalized, mm. all right? But if you're not eating fresh fruit, leafy greens, vegetation, and herbal teas, and you're just doing meat, dairy, eggs, chicken, fish, flesh, flour, pancakes, waffles, pizza, all of this stuff, then no, this is the acidity. This is the foundation of all of your cancer, all your lupus, all your fibromyalgia, all of your obesity because your body's perfectly and divinely designed and we are not designed for any of that. Oh, that's, that just knocked off my question about, uh, can you tell us who we are? And you just kind of answered that. But that was awesome because I, I, I that hit different when you said, um basically look into the wild look into nature and i travel a, a lot extensively all over the world and i gotta tell you <laughs> I, I don't see chicken in the wild <laughs> <laughs> i'm like whoa wait a minute that is different like i don't see no chicken out there in the wild you know you don't we see cows you don't see pigs you don't see the turkeys you might see some wild turkey somewhere but bottom line is that it's all cultivated uh, that hit that that went that went hit a little different, and I liked how you went kind of to the uh, you you kind of touched a little bit on the cleansing of uh, ourselves, being able to you know regenerate themselves when we eat fresh fruits and leafy greens. I want to ask you a two part question. 
because I want to know for myself and I would I would speak for the audience because they're here too. Um, what about juicing, like juices? What do you what do you think about that, and uh, what do you see that playing a role? Is that something we should be doing, looking into? Well, I think that the real issue is understanding however old you are. When you multiply your years of life times 365 days, then you'll get how many days of life you've been living. So I think you said you were 40. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So that means you've lived 14,600 days. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. From the day that you came out of your mother's womb, somebody bathed you until you could bathe yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, being in Florida, being with all of this heat, there are times, even here in Atlanta, with all of the heat that we've had, we bathe more than once a day. Mm -hmm. All right. So for all intents and purposes, you've had over 14,600 baths, mm -hmm. even if it was just bird bath. You understand where you could just wash up and bathe soap and water, whatever. You understand? Mm -hmm. Most people bathe every day. That's a part of the hygienic practices of our society brush your teeth, comb your hair, wash your face, make yourself up, you understand, groom yourself. All right, but for all of those days of life when you were eating the flesh of dead animals, the aborted fetuses of chickens, the plus and mucus of cows, artificial colors, artificial flavors, all of this garbage, mm. then you have the accumulation of all of that over time because you were not as aggressive with your internal cleansing as you were your external cleansing and washing between your toes, between your legs, crack your behind, swabbing your ears and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying is that we are trying to, we can't hardly even catch up with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we're having to care to cleanse yeah. daily. Yeah. All right. But the issue is, is that just doing juices by themselves is not going to get all of the nitrates, nitrites, BHA, BAC, artificial colors, artificial flavors, iron filings and whatnot out of the system. Mm. Now, many of us, when we were youth, we craved the dirt. We ate the dirt. We had a craving for chalk, cornstarch, argo starch. You remember anything like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember, I remember okay. so, I used to eat right. corn, I off the spoon. Right. So that was the DNA kicking in because all indigenous and native people have always dealt with the clay. The clay is the natural detoxifier, nullifier, magnet, magnetization for loosening up anything that's inorganic, artificial, chemical and whatnot from the tissues. Mm. So so my cleansing regimen is a protocol of internal cleansing daily, mm -hmm. which would start with the clay and then the enemas, mm -hmm. all right? And so many, many ones may be old enough to have spent time with your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother and whatnot and saw these red rubber bags hanging in the bathroom. You yep. remember that with the uh -huh. white tubes? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm so old enough to remember that, yeah. That's a part of the protocol is cleansing the colon daily. Mm. All right, because depending on the, the accumulation and the saturation of mucus that is binding the chemicals and nitrates and nitrites of BHA to BHT. Then if you smoke mm. tobacco, if you smoke blunts, if you smoke marijuana, if you smoke cigarettes, then you have a plethora of other chemicals that are now saturating not just your lungs, but your brains and your organs, mm -hmm. all right? If you drink alcohol, then you've got other chemicals now affecting your liver. If you had Kool-Aid, if you had Powerade, if you had Gator A, if you had any of these artificially colored flavored drinks that are sold on these shelves, in addition to the Reese's Cups, the Hershey's bars, all of this stuff that have all of this other stuff. If you drink, if you ate the uh, Orbits and the and the uh, Starbursts and all of the artificial colors, the red dye, blue lake, this, that, and the other, you got all of these chemicals in your system that the, just juicing is not sufficient. Mm-hmm. You understand? And this is why in the 45 years that I've been strict vegetarian and whatnot, and in one city here in Atlanta, I've seen so many vegan vegetarians pass away with breast cancer, colon cancer, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, cancer. Why? 
because nobody ever made a proper estimation and guesstimation of the accumulation, the contraindication and saturation of nitrates, nitrites, BHA, BHT, and all of the chemicals that we were bombarded with from the time we were in utero. Oh, Jesus. Gee, oh my, oh my. This is a, uh, this is a talk for the ages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we have about, five minutes and then we'll come back, but um, I'll, I'll give you a two minute countdown, you know, when we get there and then um, I, I'm going to come back with you and just kind of like answer some more things for us. I want to ask you, um, I've been witnessing around me uh, a plethora of middle-aged men, I would say around black men, around 45, 50 years old, Dropping dead. My mom's boyfriend dropped dead. My uncle on my biological father's side dropped dead. Like what? What? Is, and this was all in this year, like months ago. And I'm witnessing black men, not just in my own immediate circle of people, but in other realms of friends that I I'm around. And their male, middle aged family members are dropping dead. What? What is happening to? Uh, these to us as a as as a, as a, as a, as a race as a culture as a people where we are just dropping dead especially the men at this at such early ages it's it's the genocide it is an agenda that is consciously planned and executed to have people become cash cows in a global system of oppression in the creation of multi-trillion dollar industry in inebriation, intoxication, violation, subjugation, stupefaction, you understand, ignorance, not caring, niggerdom, right? And then, you understand, then yes. the cancer, the heart disease, the diabetes, and all of the other stuff where it's like, okay, no other being lives to kill itself. Mm -hmm. But we've been given lies that we have to die from something anyway. Uh, right. And that's, why I, and that's why I started out by reminding us that we are already in the realm of eternity. Right. Mm. There is no death in the air here. Yeah. We don't see death. Except we might see the cars that have, have hit these animals. But otherwise, you just don't see just tons of animals just dying except yeah. for the, the sonar of the uh, uh, the marine um, submarines and all of that and and what's going on in terms of the war machines that are in the depths of the ocean where the, the where the whales and the dolphin are beaching themselves I'm just yeah. saying but nothing is committing suicide it's all impacted by a people who are in the progression of errors. You understand error in terms of feeling entitled to subjugate, feeling entitled to dominate, yeah. feeling entitled to to really uh, have dominion over other ones. And I'm saying the intelligence of existence never intended for anyone to be under the auspices of a stupid people. Uh. You understand stupid meaning, you know you're wrong, you don't care to be right, you're in violation of the primary laws that govern your being, and then you don't give a damn. Mm. That mm. you will continue to be in the progression of error and feeling entitled to, to your free will to be enslaved to whatever appetite, passion, or desire you have. Mm. You understand? You feel as though you are entitled. You have the right to be wrong. Ugh. You understand? Right. That right. nobody should be able to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. You understand? But then it's that like you act like, okay, you're not following somebody. People say, oh, well, sister, you know, I, I don't agree with what you're saying. You understand? But, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm a free thinking person. I'm saying you are, you've never had a free thought in your mind. If you're eating the flesh of dead animals, the aborted fetuses of chickens, the pus and mucus of cows, artificial colors, artificial flavors, it's intended so that you cannot think. Oh, come on now. You understand? Otherwise, if we could think with all of this shit in our bodies, yeah. could we have outthought this? We should have outthought it, but we haven't outthought it. Mm -hmm. We get paid to drive the chickens to slaughter. We get paid to be killing these animals daily. 
We get paid to be selling our bodies in, in the strip clubs and, and, and whoring. We get paid because we have lost our capacity for being the vehicles and vessels of the creator's activity to stand in the light of the supreme intelligence that we each are as these points of its own presence and that we are disconnected from our guides, our angels, and our right alignment with the laws that govern us. So we prefer to be lawless. Uh, I'm just saying that's a program. Let me, let me, let me. Let me let me go ahead and hit the um stop button now. Let's come back. Keep that fire going because I'm just letting you do your thing. Um, I'll be right back. So right. let's come. Just click back on the link and we'll be right here. Send in All another right. link. Yeah, yeah. I'll send another one out. All right. 